Backpropagation is at the heart of the deep learning revolution. Even in meta-learning, we often hardcode backpropagation as a fixed routine. But can backpropagation also be implemented in recurrent neural networks? And can we discover novel general purpose learning algorithms? These are the questions we investigate in this paper. We will first start with setting up the problem statement. Meta-learning general purpose learning algorithms. We will then explore the overfitting problem with the standard meta-recurrent neural networks, also known as memory-based meta-learning. We then propose our method, variable shared meta-learning. VSML can be seen as a sparse shared weight matrix, message passing between RNNs, or equiv equivalently as learning how to update your weights. After, we will demonstrate how VSML can implement backprop purely in the recurrent dynamics of an RNN. Beyond that, VSML can discover novel learning algorithms that generalize significantly out of distribution. But before we go into meta-learning, what does designing learning algorithms manually look like? Let's say we are given a problem such as this lunar lander or L environment. Conventionally, we as researchers will invent a learning algorithm, say a policy gradient, to maximize the expected reward. We expect this algorithm to not only work in the specific environment, but to be applicable to a wide range of them. Unfortunately, most meta-learning to date would not fit this bill. The meta learned algorithm will probably be able to adapt to variants of Lunar Lander, but when we would want to use the algorithm in the Hopper environment, it would not generalize. The same issue exists in supervised learning. We would want to discover learning algorithms that don't just work on MNIST, but also on Fashion MNIST or ImageNet. In this line of research, we are interested in general purpose meta learning. The goal is to discover novel and general purpose learning algorithms automatically. Just like human engineered learning algorithms, the meta learned algorithms have to be reusable across a wide range of environments and tasks. Previous work on this issue in the context of RL has represented learning algorithms using parameterized objective functions. Meta learning would then correspond to optimizing over these meta parameters to discover novel learning algorithms. The discovered learning algorithms tend to turned out to be quite general purpose, but still rely on backpropagation and gradient descent. In contrast, one of the most simple meta-learners to date are meta-recurrent neural networks. They learn purely in their activations without relying on backpropagation and gradient descent. A simple RNN can implement a learning algorithm in its parameters. We refer to those as the meta-variables VM. The learned variables VL are the state and activations of this RNN storing information about what has been learned. And the crucial ingredient here is to add a feedback signal, say the label in supervised learning or the reward in RL to the LSTM inputs. This allows for learning to happen based on that feedback signal, purely in the activations. The natural question is, can we discover novel learning algorithms without even hard coding back propagation into them? This would enable meta-learning all the aspects of the learning algorithm how to make sure these learning algorithms still generalize? And can this increase learning efficiency over known learning algorithms? And as a special case, can we encode backpropagation and gradient descent purely in the recurrent dynamics of an RNN? These are the questions we focus on in this paper. So why can we not just use the standard meta recurrent neural network? The problem is that there is really not much memory available for learning. We refer to this as the variable ratio problem. An RNN has O of n activations and O of n squared weights. Thus, there are only O of n variables available for learning, VL, whereas O of n squared meta variables, VM, encode the learning algorithm. And this makes the learning algorithm overparameterized and prone to overfitting. So, how can we fix this problem? We would want the learning algorithm to be bottlenecked and of low complexity. And um, we propose to introduce variable sharing and sparsity into the neural network, essentially reusing the learning algorithm in many parts of the network. We call this variable shared meta-learning, or VSML for short. On the left, we have a standard recurrent neural network weight matrix, here randomly initialized. And this matrix could be used in a meta-RNN. In variable shared meta-learning, we have a sparse matrix that uses the same pattern repeatedly in different locations. Essentially, sharing the same meta variables, the learning algorithm, in many locations. This means we can have arbitrarily man, many learned variables or memory, while the number of meta variables or parameters 
is fixed. So which sharing and sparsity scheme should we use? The VSIML weight matrix we have shown corresponds to many RNNs passing messages to each other. And all of these RNNs share the same parameters. Together, they define a single big RNN with a sparse shared weight matrix. The next question then is how these RNNs should be connected to each other. One option that we investigate here is to think of these RNNs as replacing weights in some emerging neural network. Usually, weights are updated through backpropagation and gradient descent. Here, there are no weights, but just RNNs in their place. The RNN dynamics define how learning proceeds. The RNNs are multidimensional and stateful, so can implement a learning algorithm. And the messages between these RNNs, also vectors, can, interpret, can be interpreted as the activations in this emerging neural network. Zooming in a little bit, here we have eight RNNs that pass messages to create an emerging neural network of two layers with two units. The RNNs share their parameters, but also have separate states. In this picture, information only flows forward in the neural network, as we are used to from feedforward networks. But we will not use backpropagation for learning. Instead, the RNNs themselves encode the learning algorithm. But this means information also has to flow backwards in the neural network, as shown here, with forward messages and backward messages. Finally, we need a feedback signal to allow the RNNs to implement a learning algorithm. The forward messages at the back of the network correspond to the outputs of the network used to make a prediction about the end digit. We then feed an arrow signal about how good that prediction was back into the network as a backward message. Given a VSML weight matrix, unrolling this RNN then corresponds to learning. Inputs such as endless digits are fed at each step, the RNN makes a prediction, and the prediction arrow is fed at the next time step, together with a new image. And this continues to form a learning algorithm that learns online from many examples. Finally, meta-learning corresponds to optimizing these RNN weights. We do this with evolution strategies in the paper. Remember that the sparse shared recurrent weight matrix in VSML corresponds to message passing between RNNs. So what can VSML meta learn? Previously, we argued we don't want the fixed inductive bias of backpropagation in our system. But of course, a powerful meta learner should be able to meta learn an algorithm such as backpropagation. In fact, our LSTM can implement backpropagation purely in its recurrent dynamics. To demonstrate this for VSML, we perform a process we call learning algorithm cloning. We optimize each sub-RNN in VSML to store a weight W and bias B as a subset of its state. We also optimize it to compute 10H of XW plus B to implement neural forward computation. Finally, we optimize it to update W and B according to the backpropagation algorithm. And then we unroll the RNN on endless and fashion endless. We refer to this as meta test time. In the plots, we see that just by running the variable shared meta RNN forward, the loss on the y axis is reduced significantly. We thus have implemented backpropagation in the recurrent neural network itself, though it is worth noting that there are some stability issues after a large number of gradient steps. Another possibility is to meta learn supervised online learning entirely from scratch. First, the value shared meta RNN is meta trained on a meta training distribution, in this example, just the endless data set, to minimize the sum of cross entropies. And that means learning is incentivized to be as sample efficient as possible. During meta testing, we plot the accuracy on all previous inputs on the y axis, thus starting with low values in the beginning of learning, but then rising very quickly. And learning turns out to be much faster compared to backpropagation with Adam. But it gets better. The resulting LSTM can be run unmodified for meta testing on an entirely different data set, here fashion analyst. It still performs learning fairly well, meaning we have meta learned a fairly general purpose learning algorithm. And if we compare this to a standard meta RNN, we see that our baseline horribly overfits. The result is quite remarkable, as such generalization is achieved without using any hard coded gradients during meta testing, purely by running the LSTM forward. The MetaLearn learning algorithm does not only generalize to a different data set, but also other variations, such as different numbers of classes, upscaling of the inputs, or downscaling of the inputs, 
even learning on a shuffled data set yields similar performance, or projecting the entire data set using a random projection matrix. Finally, it generalizes to various other data sets, like randomly generated classification tasks or determining the sign of a sum of inputs. In conclusion, the meta-learned learning algorithm does not rely on feature reuse, but rather we have discovered an algorithmic learning procedure. Finally, we wanted to analyze how the meta-learned learning algorithm works. After meta-training in the standard way, we feed the same image twice in a row during meta-testing. This allows us to determine how quickly the SMN learns to recognize an image. In the plot um, above, we see that the network always predicts the image correctly the second time, with the exception of the first zero. In conclusion, BSML has discovered a learning algorithm based on fast association. And if we compare this to SGD and Adam, such, such a fast association is not happening. The network requires many trials to make the correct predictions. Increasing the learning rate or multiple gradient steps on the same example do not produce comparable results to VSML. So, in summary, we have introduced variable shared meta-learning, a simple variable sharing and sparsity principle that leads to three interesting interpretations. A sparse shared weight matrix, and when using a specific sharing and sparsity scheme, RNNs that pass messages between each other. And when we select a specific connectivity between these RNNs, we can interpret RNNs as replacing weights and implementing weight updates. VSML allows for general purpose meta learning where the number of learned variables is much bigger than the meta variables. We can meta learn backprop and novel learning algorithms in the recurrent dynamics of those RNNs. Everything is a variable. There is no precise distinction between a weight and an activation. Variables we thought of as activations can be interpreted as the weights in an emergent neural network. The activations of this LSTM play the role of a weight if it passes messages to other LSTMs in a certain way. This makes variable sharing a general framework to express learning rules. You can find me on my website, on Twitter, as well as in the poster session. I'm very much looking forward to discussions about meta-learning and general purpose meta-learning in particular. Thank you.